Yeah. So this will be probably a YouTuber. So you can say hi to YouTube if you want to be included in the video. And hello, YouTube. We are doing a 14.7 ADC tier list. This will be aimed at pretty much all ELOs. No real ELO in specific. I do, however, play all of my games in Challenger and Grandmaster. So of course, I'm a little bit biased. So I don't know exactly what it feels like to play in low ELO and maybe you guys will have some differing opinions. If you do, then feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments. Doesn't get better than this. So let's have a look and think a little bit, use our brain a little bit. What changed between previous patch and this patch? Now, in terms of champions, not much changed. The only champion ADC that got changed was Smolder, who got buffed. I do think... His win rate went up by like 2%, which is pretty decent. It's pretty decent, not gonna lie. Makes me think like 1.7%, he's 50% now. Makes me think that while he's still on the weaker side, it's more playable than it was before. I think before it was kind of unplayable here where you were just like useless until 225 stacks and then you got to 225 stacks and you're not broken, you know? And that's the problem. If you're gonna be useless then you need to become broken, otherwise, it's just not worth it. And I think you're still kind of useless for most of the game, but the buffs that he did get, I think helps him a little bit. He got some, I think he got three armor, which makes him a little bit more durable in the early game. Harder to dive, harder to kill in general. And then also got some crit damage on his Q, which I think is, is a good change in the right direction. But overall, I will still not be playing Smolder. But the other thing that changed that's pretty big for ADCs is uh, Static Shiv getting nerfed. So I think that definitely for me, puts like Sari kind of down a tier. Um, and I think it makes that a lot of other champions that would be building it, makes them not build it. I think on Zeri, it's still a viable option, but maybe Zeri is the only one that will be buying static now. It's at least my kind of theory. And then also support items got nerfed and also support damage in general got nerfed a little bit, which I don't think really changes bot lane that much. Uh, maybe some bully lanes are a little bit weaker. Um, stuff like Lushanami, maybe Camille support got nerfed, but overall, I don't think it changes too much for ADC. So let's start with my boy Aphelios. I think Aphelios is still A tier. I think now, I don't think you're going to be buying Static Shiv ever on Aphelios again, or in most games, you're not going to. So I think you're in between the option of either going Kraken Slayer or going Storm Racer. Storm Racer, if you really want the movement speed and you feel like you need mobility to play the team fights, and then Kraken Slayer, if they're kind of tanky and you want the most damage and good for objective taking for Baron Asher's drakes all that maybe you would go static when neither of those apply and you just want to find noon quiver item not sure static was never that crazy on aphelios even last patch when it was like op so i don't think you should be going static anymore on aphelios but i think he's still good with the ie and ldr buffs uh, and for me he falls into a tier then we have ash i think ash as well for me falls into a tier uh, she is just a really strong lane bully has good like wave control has good utility for the team not as much as a hyper carry but just overall, it's a pretty annoying presence. I feel like the biggest strength of Ash is that it just makes the enemy game kind of annoying to play or enemy ADC. Like you're kind of making the enemy ADC weaker just because they have a harder laning phase and they have to take cleanse usually, which means they can't go ghost. And then like you can also make them set them behind in the laning phase and ulti them in team fights, stuff like that. And then Caitlyn, we're kind of going alphabetically here, but not quite. I think Caitlyn is kind of B tier. I think she was a kind of a fine static user. Uh, she's definitely happy about the IE LDR buffs from 14.6. Just don't really feel like the supports that are being played are that favorable for Caitlyn right now. I still believe that engaged supports are the best. And I just think when you have an engaged support, there's a lot of better options than Caitlyn. I do however think though, if you have something like a Karma support, something like a Lux support, that Caitlyn definitely can fall into A and maybe even S tier, depending on the game. But I think most of those, most of the time, those conditions are not met in my game. If that's not true for your game, if you have a Seraph support every game, Caitlyn is gonna be pretty good. But if you have something like an Nautilus, Thresh, Recon, Leona, Alistar, Blitzcrank, anything like that, I don't think Caitlyn's gonna be the right. Draven, I think he's like, a tier as well. I think he hurts a little bit from the serrated Dirk nerf because that was a really good item on him before that I think is not that good anymore. It's still a fine component, but it's not like OP like it was. I also think the fact that they removed 5 AD from Coldfield's Warhammer makes the Essence Reaver build a lot more clunky. And now it's like you're buying Essence Reaver, but it's only 20 AD. It's like, oh my God, it's so painful to buy. And I mean, that's, that's the way I've been circumventing that is by going like BF Sword or Pickaxe into Essence Reaver, but it still feels kind of clunky and it doesn't feel 
heal crazy strong, but he still has like really good spots and he can still bully lane really hard and take over games. I want to test more the Draven build with the Essence River Eclipse Shield Bow with Ingenious Hunter. I think that could have potential. I like Eclipse a lot on pretty much every champ. And Ingenious Hunter with those items does sound like a juicy combo. Okay, let's do Kogma. Kogma, A tier as well. Support dependent kinda. If you have Lulu, Braum, Milio, this champion's here. Without it, this champion is kind of here, I think. Pretty good. Kind of surprised at how good I think he is. Good into a lot of other hyper carries that are being played, such as like Zeri. I think he's fine into Jinx. Good into Aphelios. Fine into Twitch, I think. Fine into lots of these lower range options. Put a math, T tier for me. Just don't think he uses crit items that well. I think her lethality items are kind of weak. I feel like she gets outscaled pretty fast while not having so much a laning bully upside like something like a lethality virus does I do think she's higher in low elo though i could see her being like b or even low a tier and high and lower elos but in my games she just doesn't look that useful and yeah gonna leave her there vein i think low b tier the nerf she got was pretty significant she doesn't really have a crazy i feel like like the storm racer essence river build is probably fine on it build is probably fine as well but it's just like it's kind of lacking that juice, I feel like. And she doesn't really pack that punch that she normally does. Probably still better in top lane, unfortunately. Because she just has too many bad matchups in bot lane. And But if you get out of laning phase, she's still a very good scaling champ. Saver, who I previously rated very low. And I think it's C or B. It's C or B. What's her win rate? It's probably not that bad, Saver win rate. No, it's pretty good. Okay, I think Saver... With the win rate, she deserves B tier. I think Sivir is actually not that bad. The buff she got was kind of whatever, but the buff to Navorian LDR, she's pretty happy about that. That those items are core on her every game. Uh, and she's pretty good into Sari. Then the question is kind of like, would you rather have Sivir or Sari? A lot of times you'd rather have Sari. But, you know, to each their own, Sivir can buff up her team. Sivir does do insane damage at six items. I think at six items, there's nothing that does more damage if enemy clumps up than Sivir. I mean, Aphelios blue ult, I guess. But it's insane, the damage. Is it Twitch? Twitch, I think, low A tier for me. Doesn't really interact that much with crit. I think he's still kind of better with on hit, even after the crit buffs. At least that's my impression. Maybe something like IE third is good, but you're like kind of going on it in the first two items. I do, however, think that he's always going to be a pretty good staple solo queue pick, just because people always fucking die to the stealth. So if you're good at playing around it, then in low elo, you're going to kill people. But uh, the higher up you get, and the more people abuse the fact that Twitch has a pretty bad laning phase and pretty bad wave clear, I think it gets harder and harder to play as Twitch. If this was like high low only tier list, probably it'd be like B tier. If we count for low elo and the fact that people always die to fucking stealth and the fact that he can be played AP with pretty good results, I think he's A tier for me. Got Senna, I'm not really sure. So, okay, so here's what they did with Senna, right? First, they nerfed her soul, nerfed her fucking soul spawn rate, right? And then they rebuffed her soul spawn rate on minions she kills, but they fixed the bug that if your support kills a minion with relic shield, that it counts as them killing the minion. So that they, they made it so that now if a support kills a minion with relic shield, Senna is the one that gets the kill fucking the game knows that she killed it and she doesn't get full soul value percentage chance i can't it's too complicated of a sentence but i think she's better now than she was last patch the credit yeah okay so think of it this way okay if senna kills a minion she has eight percent chance to spawn a soul if someone else kills the minion or if the minion dies to anything else she has like a 24 percent chance before when your support killed something with relic shield you had a 24 percent chance of getting that soul but now they made it so that if your support kills a minion with relic shield which is how it's always been is she gets the eight percent chance because it counts as her killing the minion but they reverted the nerf that was that senna only gets two percent souls for me she kills so she's definitely way better than last patch that's for sure because they kind of killed her last patch i think they kind of killed her i do think she is between a and b tier she's a fucking obnoxious champion and if you have a duo that can play tom kench or nautilus for you i think it's pretty free elo especially if you can farm some games as well if you're playing solo queue and you're gonna end up with like a random enchanter support it's gonna be tougher it's gonna be tougher for sure i think high b tier i think high b tier and we got samira i think samira sucks bro is she c tier level of suck i don't know if it's just c tier level of suck nah she's b tier no i mean she has her spots okay so when is it a samira spot samira is good when you have rel she's best with rel by far her best support is rel but she's decent with every engaged support and if enemy team is quite squishy and low cc if 
all of those things align, she's a pretty good champion. But when does that happen? One in 50 games? Like when you have a rel support in the full squishy enemy team with also very low CC, it's just so rare. It's so rare that I have a game where I think, wow, Samira is a turbo peak here. But when she's a turbo peak, she can be pretty free win. I think she needs some base stats buffs. I just feel like she's so weak early levels. Make her so that she can E on allies. You know what? That's the only thing I want. Maybe nerf her damage if you have to, but just make it so you have to. You can E on allies. It just introduces so much more skill expression and makes the champion so much more intelligent and much less telegraphed and much more interesting. I, I hate that they removed that. Just had to get that out there. Smolder, he got a small buff. I think he falls low B tier. Actually, maybe I'm comfortable. I'm going to put him with MF in C tier. I think there's better champions, better hyperscalers than Smolder. Just too weak early game. I would put him D tier previous patch. Now he's C tier for me. Uh, the buff he got was decent. Went up 2% win rate. Not a good champ, I think. Maybe people can find some good crit build on him. But for now, it's just kind of like really mediocre early game for not that insane 1v9 scaling. The fact that the execute is capped to 6.5, it like it barely feels like you have an execute. Then we got Zeri. I think I rated Zeri Z tier last patch. I think she's S tier now. Maybe there is even a Z tier on this patch. I just feel like now Zeri is in a more normal spot. She's still, for me, I think the best ADC to climb on in high low. She just works in every team comp versus every team comp in every matchup with any support in any game. For me, that's like the best thing you can have in an ADC. It's just versatility. And right now I just feel like there's few games where I pick Zeri and I think to myself, wow, I should not have picked Zeri here. Zaya, upper B tier, situationally strong. If they have a really heavy dive comp, she can be here, even here. But you're gonna be picking ADC early, probably. You're not gonna be seeing enemy champions. You might have a range support, which was size not very good with. You might not be able to see all those conditions play out. Therefore, for me, she's B tier. And if she doesn't have those conditions play out, I'd rather have a lot of the champs in A and S tier instead. We got Tristana. I have maybe feel comfortable putting her low A tier. I always feel like this champion is kind of like, I don't want to say, like kind of sleeper, honestly. I don't know what her win rate is. Where is she here? Win rate's not that crazy, to be honest. But she doesn't seem bad to me. I feel like she has pretty good early game, pretty good snowballing, pretty good scaling. But I'd be more comfortable putting her alongside i think in b tier i think if you have a good laning phase for her where you can jump in you have a good engage support you get a lot of work done i think if you snowball on this champion it's so obnoxious but if you're zero zero equals cs she's not like that crazy of a champion and in a lot of games she's gonna be better mid lane just due to like the matchups uh, I think her matchups a lot of the time are better in mid lane than in bot lane. And she can also jump in easier in mid lane. We have Nyla. A or B tier? I think it would be A tier. I feel like Nyla scaling right now feels seems pretty good. I've been playing a little bit against Nyla. And every game, I've been kind of thinking, oh, she's going to get outscaled soon, right? And then we get to late game, and she's kind of fucking one-shotting? So I think she's pretty strong. Her early game is pretty good. She has good all-in threat. She is definitely quite situational like Saya, but I feel like she has more 1v9 opportunities than maybe Saya does. And she can also enable her support more than Saya can. So for me, I think I, I feel comfortable putting her into A tier. I feel like she's also happy that Static got nerfed because she wasn't really a building Static. And Static allowed for a lot of these other champs to not interact with Nyla, which she didn't really like. Okay, I'm just going to go like continue going with the normal ADCs and then we'll do like the weird ones at the end. We got Jinx. I think Jinx... I, I don't know if I'd put Jinx in Z tier. I feel like Jinx is false for me. I think she's more reliable than Zeri now in, in S tier. Maybe not more reliable isn't the right word, but she has higher carry potential than Zeri, but she has more games where she's going to be harder to pilot through, I think, because she doesn't have any mobility, which Zeri does. And she has, I think, some worse matchups than Zeri does. I think if you play something like Jinx Janna into Nautilus, with Zeri, you have a lot of safety, right? You can hug a wall. Nautilus can never really hook you because you can just E backwards. While with Jinx, you're in a mobile hyper carry. So all it takes is a gank or two, and it's going to be hard to you know, like in feed. But the thing is, that the, the weird thing about Jinx is that you can go 0 5, then you get two items, you get a reset. And it's kind of like you're 5 0. That's the weird thing, you know? Like, I was banning Jinx a lot. Not because I think she like she was like obnoxious to play against. It just felt like I was legit playing games where I made the enemy jinx like zero six or one and six or one and five whatever. I put her far behind in the early game, and then 
My team does some stupid ass shit. She gets a shutdown and a reset. She's Guma Yusi in prime with the movement, bro. What the fuck is going on? Is this Timmy with the reset or is it fucking Uzi playing here? I'm not so sure. Holy fuck. Running us down like it's nobody's business. So yeah, I think Jinx is the best solo QADC right now to climb. She has the best win rate. Her stats are just stupid, okay? There's just no other way around it. She is the most played champion in the game with nearly a 54% win rate. That's not normal. Like normally the most played champions in the game do not have insane win rates. They have like 52. Like Ari is another champ that has crazy win rates. But like a lot of these like 50, 49, 50, 50, 51, 52, 51, 51, 51, 51, 51 you know? And you got to go kind of far down before you start to see like 53, 54. But it seems like everybody in their grandma can play Jinx and everybody in their grandma can win on Jinx. And that's why I think she's a bit of a problem right now. Then we got Astral. I think he's, for me, high B tier, low A tier. I think low A tier is fair. I think Essence Shriver is still the go-to build on him. With like Essence Shriver into Man Immune into Shoujin. And then Cerilda, something like that. I think he's really good with range supports. He's really good in games where you can't really pick a normal ADC. Like they have lots of assassins, they have lots of dive, and it's just like a really awkward game to play. Like trying to pick a normal ADC when they have like fucking Malphite Diana also is just impossible, you know? So I think in games like that, Ezreal can be great. Ezreal's great with Bard, he's great with Karma, he's great with Nami. Has a lot of good enchanter and um, mage support pairings. So for me, he kind of falls into the same like niche as Caitlyn, but he's kind of fills a different niche because Caitlyn kind of wants to bully with her mm, enchanter or mage support, while Ezreal kind of wants to more survive lane and maybe bully, maybe. But his scaling is like more reliable and his mid game is a lot more reliable than Caitlyn's. And then Kai'Sa, I think Kai'Sa falls into A tier as well. I'd say I feel like she's somewhere along the lines of, yeah, I think something like this, uh, maybe something like this. I think Kai'Sa has still really good AP builds. I think if you're playing her AD, she's still fine, but I feel like with AP, it feels like her scaling is just so insane. You just get to a point where your W plus uh, passive proc just does like one shot scenario. She doesn't really interact much with crit, so she doesn't get much benefit out of the IE and LDR buffs. I think with on hit, she's still good though with Kraken and Terminus. Overall, I think Kai'Sa is the best time to pick Kai'Sa is when you can go her AP. If you're forced to go AD, unless you have a really good dive comp, she's going to be in the mid but if she can go ap i think she's she's up there with the big boys then we got varus he's i feel like this champion is strong and then you look at the win rates this champion just doesn't win i know i put aphelios high when he has a bad win rate but aphelios always has a bad win rate in solo queue he always does even when he's like at his peak strength but varus normally had quite a bit higher win rate than this like if we look at previous patches when like lethality varus was bonkers okay it seems like he only had one patch of actual good win rate but still it's pretty low 49.5 i think he's good with both lethality and on hit but i think i'll, I'll have to put him b tier uh, I think he's a really good lane bully. He struggles in games where he doesn't really have good setup. You kind of need either a frontline for you or other champions to deal damage. And in games where you don't really have that, it's going to be hard to play. I think he's good with... Th his biggest strength is just his versatility, that he can be good with both melee supports and with range supports. But I think Estral can fulfill the same niche and be easier to carry on in solo queue due to the fact that you have mobility and you have a bit more reliable mid-game scaling. Just the safety that Astral gives you is so much higher than Varus. It feels like if you make one mistake on Varus, it's hard to win the game. We got Lucian. Uh, I think low B tier. I think Lucian Nami is kind of dead. They nerfed... Uh, let's just have a look here. Like They nerfed Mandate. They nerfed Mandate. They nerfed Static Shiv. Uh, and they nerfed um, Nami E damage, which I think is huge for Lucian Nami. 20 less damage per, per thing on max rank Nami E, which means like if Lucian dashes right and uses all three of the E's, that's uh, 60 less damage. And then also add on to the fact that Mandate lost like 2% damage or something. 2% current HP damage and Shiv got 200 gold more expensive. This thing Lucian Nami is kind of dead. I think Lucian Melee is still going to be good. Uh, Lucian Braum should still be fine. But it's kind of like, why would we play Lucian at this point? We can just play another hyper carry and kind of get the same results. And just kind of have a better scaling and better game and all that jazz. So not the biggest fan of Lucian right now. I think Riot could still do some work and try to kind of time away from being a Nami Milio slave and make him into more of a champion of his own. I think that would be really cool if they would manage to do that. But they haven't managed to do it so far. But maybe they will. It would be nice at least. I love Lucian, but I love him when he's like a combo 
machine rather than being a one-shot machine. I think the one-shot Lucian is pretty boring and un uninteractive, while the Lucian that is perma-dashing, perma-dodging, perma-jumping around, I think that Lucian is really fun and really high adrenaline gameplay. So I hope we can return to that being the meta sometime. And speaking of perma-dashing, we have Kalista. I think Kalista for me calls, falls kind of similar to Varus. Better laning phase can also now kind of go both lethality and on it. People are loving the lethality Kalista in competitive, but just going to be hard to carry on in solo queue because if you make one mistake you're going to probably lose the game these champions just mostly function when they're ahead and when they're in control of the game and once they lose the pacing of the game it can be really hard to get it back and you don't really have any like good scaling to fall back on like a lot of other champions in this list does however if you have a support duo that you feel comfortable with and that you're able to like take over lane with. I think this champion can be really, really good. Has one of the best laning phases in the game alongside Draven and just has really high snowball potential and really good objective control with the Rand. Really good, like you can save your support with ulti. You can engage with your support with ulti. Brings a lot of utility, a lot of damage, a lot of mobility, a lot of sinks to the game. We got Jin. I think Jin falls into B tier as well. Somewhere along the lines of here. I think he Kind of enjoys the IELDR buffs, but it just feels like he's kind of outshined by other champs. Like, I played a Jin game into Jinx, and it was like, okay, that's nice. I was stronger than her for the first 10 minutes. And then she's literally 500 times stronger than me because she can do five auto attacks in the time that I do one. And it's like, yeah, I guess I picked Jin, you know, I picked Jin. I have, I, I, I shot my fourth shot. That's what I did. Now I got no more bullets. I need more bullets. I think Jin is pretty mid. I think he falls into B tier. Good with range supports, like a lot of other champions in B tier here. Kind of mid with melee supports and just not that good at carrying games in general. More of a like utility supportive champ. I think loved when Lethality was really OP, but now Lethality is not that crazy anymore. I just don't think he's an insane crit user. He's just kind of fine. And then we got all these mages and weird champs. We can just go over these fast. I think Huey is the best mage in A tier. Uh, why do I think Huey is the best mage? He has by far the best early game. If you ever lane against Huey, you'll know what I'm talking about. This champion is a menace in lane. It's so hard to dodge the QQ. He has so good wave control with QE. He has so good crowd control with EE. Uh, and just a lot of kill pressure. A lot of damage. And just, like, is really good into mobile ADCs. Like, trying to play Draven or Aphelios into Huey bot lane. Oof, fucking sucks, cock, bro. It's so unplayable. And then Ziggs, I think, doesn't, like, have the... Fulfill the same need, like... Doesn't have the laning pressure that Huey does while having a similar job later on in the game of being really good at clearing waves and having really long range. So for me, it's kind of like, why would I pick Six over Huey? The biggest thing that Six does better than Huey is like hitting towers. But if you're not winning lane, are you even hitting towers anyways? I mean, you know, I just don't think Six like, I I wouldn't pick uh, Six over Huey unless I was like a Six one trick or something. And then Seraphine, as far as I've understood, they've really tried to push Seraphine out of bot lane and into support. I don't know how well they managed it. I know her win rate went from being really crazy to going down quite a bit. But it looks like her win rate is still pretty good. She's probably still, uh, like, let's just put her B tier because I'm not fully familiar. In EU, nobody plays Seraphine. But I know that in NA, Seraphine is quite the menace. A lot of people like playing her. But I, I just never face her, honestly. I, I haven't played against Seraphine in months. We got Yasuo. I think Yasuo is fucking OP, man. Fuck this champ, bro. If you blind pick something like Aphelios or even Draven or like Twitch or some weak early game ADC like Jinx and you got to play against Yasuo plus engage support it's fucking unplayable man it's completely unplayable how do you win you need your genre to like camp you otherwise you just get killed off cooldown it's so stupid especially if it's a good Yasuo player Yasuo is very hard to play so they need to be good at piling in it to actually win the game some of his matchups in bot lane right now are so good and I think he abuses like the IE buff so well and uh, he's just pretty happy, pretty happy camper in Bolin right now. Then we got TF. I think this champion was, I thought it was pretty killed, but now I'm starting to think that it's not that dead because I'm seeing it more and more in pro leagues. I do think that it's quite a bit better in both mid and up than it is in bot lane. I think it's like B tier here. It's like situational. If you have a free lane, I think TF, ADTF is like one of the best scaling champions in the game. 
weirdly enough. APTF used to be like one of the worst scaling champs. ADTF is just like, he always one-shots you within the stun, stun duration once he gets enough items and he has so good fucking split pushing, so good map pressure. It's an obnoxious, unskilled, silly champ. And I'm like angry that they made it the viable choice to have ADTF. But I think B tier, just a lot of bad matchups. You should be able to snowball against them. And if you do, you should be able to win the game pretty easily against them. And yeah, that is my tier list for patch 14.7. Let me know what you guys think, if you disagree with any of my placements. Uh, I think ADC is in a pretty good state right now. The crit feels pretty good. Lethality is kind of like meh, but I'm kind of happy that crit seems to be the more prevalent choice. I think ADC is a more fun role to play when crit is the best. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thank you. Guys.